Welcome to a Game Guru tutorial on how to create lights and shadows inside buildings. It's a really simple demonstration, so it won't go into a lot of details. I'm just going to go through the ropes. So we've gone into Add a New Entity. We're going to go into the Buildings category and select Structure, Combat Building. I'm going to drop it into our scene. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit. And if we press the Tab key, we can actually take the roof off. And I'm also going to go into Free Flight Mode using the right mouse button. I can zoom in like so. And we're going to need something to cast the shadow. So we'll go to boxes, we'll select a crate. It's important that it's red and not green. So use the Y key to make sure that your entity that you're adding is red. Then hold down Shift and then add a few boxes like so. And maybe we can just add one on top there, a bit of variety. And then the last thing you want to do is add, um, well, two things. Add a start marker, so we can start just outside the door, and also a light. Now, the light will actually default to the floor. So what you've got to do is use the page up key, raise it up like this. And if we zoom out a little and then press the plus key, notice they're increasing the radius of the light. That just makes it stronger. So that's a nice, big, strong light. We'll put it just there, so it will create a shadow on them crates. So we drop that in, zoom in a little bit, yep, yeah, nice position for the light. And now the next thing you want to do is press the rocket, which will test this level. Because the light mapping isn't done in the editor. Maybe this is what's confusing a few users. It's actually done as part of the uh, the real-time editor. As part of the ability to uh, add entities and create landscapes and all the rest of it, whilst you're playing the game, you can also apply light mapping. But already I've done something wrong, because you can see, we can see the light now, this big yellow light. For correct light mapping you need to use static lights. Now you wouldn't see static lights when you play the game. So I already know there's something wrong. So I'll go back into the editor and then zoom closer towards our light. And you'll notice that uh, when I hover over the, the the light icon you got a little green dot and then when I move off it's red because I'm actually highlighting the building. I can actually move the building around right now. I press space to remove that. If I just hover over the widget, it's obviously selecting the widget. So now if I click and go to properties, you'll actually see we're on the light property details for the uh, for this entity. Set static mode from no to yes and click apply changes. And once that's done, now you can click test level. And then when we start the game, there should be no light. Great. So this is an invisible static light right now. It's um, it's waiting. It's sort of biding its time. And in order to activate this light and make it cast its shadows inside this building, it's quite simple. You just press F2. Now there are four modes: quick, basic, um, you know, full, and then occluded. And so we're using basic, which is just basic um, lights. Uh, obviously, you want to do it really quick. Just press F1 and it ignores all the lights, it just light maps based on the sun. So we've pressed F2 and now you can see the light is visible again but now instead of it being a dynamic light which costs you a little bit of performance in terms of what the shader has to do this is what's called a bait light. It's been baked into the textures itself, based into the textures of your game which is allowing you to make the game faster. So as you can see We've actually got a shadow being cast off that crate. There's now shadows being cast on the floor. There's the light source and the shadows cast on the floor and the wall and on each other. So that's essentially how you create an internal shadow just using static light and static entities. It's as simple as that. 